I don't know what the current terminology is for these devices, but I call them smart devices. I initially purchased a smart bulb to see what the technology was like. Ever since though, I've always stuck with smart outlets instead. I'll show you how I use my smart outlets next. I went with smart outlets because it lets me choose which non-smart devices I want to plug in to have some automated control of. The control is limited to powering them on and off, and though that doesn't sound like much, for some devices, that's all you need to get the most benefit out of them. One last thing to check when buying smart outlets is the amperage rating. For this Genie brand, older versions had a rating of 10 amps. That's a little low, but it might be okay for most household items that you'd want on a smart outlet. The newer versions from Genie now come in 13 amp versions, and they also have one designed for outdoor use with a 15 amp rating. The amperage rating is usually specified in the item details of the sale ad. I've periodically had trouble with cable modems, which in most cases when rebooted, would solve whatever problem I'd been having. Having it plugged into a smart outlet, I now schedule the outlet that the cable modem is plugged into to power off, then power on in the early hours of every morning. Other than the occasional ISP neighborhood outage, I no longer have those odd connectivity problems that I used to have. For my cable modem, I've scheduled multiple shutoff times. Sunday through Thursday will typically shut off at 10.01 p.m., but if I need an extra hour or two, I can disable the shutoff times as needed so that the latter one will take effect. Friday and Saturday only have one shutoff time at 11.30. Power on is at 1 a.m. every morning. I've done many other scheduling scenarios, and it just depends on the situation at the time. I use these plug-in air fresheners that come in many different scents. I'd plug the electrical unit in an outlet, screw in the separate bottled fragrance and leave it be, allowing the fragrance to fill the room. I'd replace the empty fragrance bottle about once a month. Similar to my cable modem, I schedule hours of the day to turn the air freshener on and off. I'm okay with it being on for short hours of the morning and evening when I'm most likely to be in the kitchen preparing meals. Otherwise, I'm fine with it powered off not doing anything. By scheduling the air freshener, I'm now able to use one bottle for 5 months as opposed to 5 weeks. Keep in mind that for any of the outlets scheduled to turn on and off, you can also turn them on and off on demand manually. This would be useful for something like a party during lunch and you need the air freshener on for an unscheduled amount of time. There's many possibilities with a smart outlet, but one of my favorites is to use it with my rice cooker. For this setup, I won't set up any automation for powering the rice cooker on and off. Instead, I'll use Genie's remote control capabilities for on-demand control of the outlet. I have the rice cooker plugged in, so I can now control the power on-demand through the app. To set it up before going out, I'll move the cooker's switch down to the cook position, then check that the cooker's left light turns on when I power on the outlet through the app. With that, when I'm out and about, I can power on the rice cooker at the right time and start the rice cooking before heading home. In doing so, I can get home just in time to have freshly cooked rice with my meal. I've found smart outlets to be one of the more versatile products I've come across in a while. The ability to integrate old-school devices with modern features of the smart outlet is a very environmentally friendly idea. I'm always looking for products that help me avoid e-waste whenever possible. This has been a fun video for me, showing you some simple ways I like to use technology. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.